Hello and welcome to today's video. Uh, today I am reviewing a pen from Zizo. Zizo uh, is an American based uh, company and they make fountain pens that are really high quality with good uh, quality workmanship uh, and at pretty reasonable prices all things considered. I'm going to show you the pens uh, pen that I've got to review. I'll show you the parts, all that sort of stuff, what comes with it, uh, and then uh, do writing sample and pros and cons. Okay, this is the packaging. Cardboard sleeve over a box, and a rather interesting box. Uh, you can see there, it's sort of like a, I suppose a, a, a faux, like, crocodile skin kind of thing. It says Zizo there on the top, and it opens out like that, which I think is kind of cool. Uh, it comes with the uh, polishing cloth, it comes with, um, this is just what the pen was packaged in, like guarantee card, a little bit of information. It does also come with a writing instruments manual, uh, which has basic sort of filling and, you know, sort of information and stuff in a couple of different languages, which is really great if you're new to fountain pens, um, you know, if someone gifted you this pen. Uh, it also comes with uh, four uh, cartridges, uh, and a converter takes a standard international co uh, converter uh, and cartridges. And the pen we're looking at uh, today specifically is this. This is the Incognito uh, Blue in with a. It's a medium nib, but it's it's listed as an FM, so fine medium. This p particular uh, pen uh, is a limited edition of 500 numbered pens. Um, they have been making the Incognito model since 2013 uh, and regularly come out with new colors, new color combinations, uh, new differences in the finish and stuff like that. So starting at the top of the pen, um, there's just a sort of a rounded finial there, uh, black plastic, and then you get a metal band. And then the body of the pen, the cap here is primarily cylindrical uh, down to lots of like sort of swirls out slightly and then cylindrical and then you've got a cap band which is chrome colored it's actually all the chrome furniture on here is brass uh, with a palladium plating which is nice uh, this is a uh, laser engraved with zizo incognito limited edition and then uh, the number of the edition which this is number 123 of 500 as you can see there the barrel of the pen uh, is cylindrical and then tapers down to a ring and then the plastic end cap there. So the pen itself uh, is brass. It's a brass body and it has been uh, lacquered and with this sort of blue, multi-layered blue glossy uh, lacquer, which is done in Japan. Depending on where you look, uh, the pens are made in Japan or in Germany. Um, so really who knows, but they are assembled in uh, the USA. Uh, but the lacquer work is done in Japan and it's done multi-layered, uh, and po you know, layer of lacquer, polish, layer of lacquer, polish, and then a couple of layers of sort of a very smooth, glossy, clear uh, polish over the top. Um, and what that does is it gives really beautiful depth to the material. Um, it's smooth. If you run your fingers like around the pen that way, you can few little bits of sort of like texture. It's very smooth down the pen. Um, it's not sort of like textured to look, you know, like the material sort of has those little ripples and stuff in it. Um, it's just a beautiful, very simple material. The clip here is nice and uh, unique. It's sort of built, you know, sort of built into the holes of the cap there. So it sweeps across. Um, it is relatively stiff, uh, but it would be functional. Uh, it, it is, I should say, functional on pen cases and pockets and things like that. It also is a very functional roll stop for the cap. Um, the cap itself is a um, twist cap and it comes off in just over around one and a quarter turns. The threads are very, very smooth, uh, impressively smooth. They are the, the section of this pen is plastic and the lining of the cap is plastic. So it's plastic on, um, on plastic, but they are very, very smooth threads. You can see here the text, the section, it has a little band at the top of it and then the threads and then tapers down to another sort of brass, uh, brass palladium coated, uh, end there, uh, which sort of very sharply 
sort of uh, goes out there and then reveals a uh, steel nib. Uh, looks to be about a number five, uh, and to my eye, looks probably like um, a Yovo, but it could be, you know, Yovo Schmidt or Bock. Uh, the threads to reveal the uh, where the cartridge or the converter goes in. Uh, I just have a cartridge in here. This is one of the one of the black cartridges that came with the pen. Which they say the ink is made in Austria, so that does limit down our uh, our, our makers of the ink um, somewhat. Uh, this is the second cartridge of this ink I've had in it. The first one uh, ran dry, and I'm a little bit into the second one. Um, it is, or well, didn't run dry, I wrote it dry, more to the point. Um, it does take a bit with this pen to run a cartridge dry. Um, but, you know, as I said, it does come with a converter and you can use uh, bot any bottled ink uh, for that purpose. Um, the threads there are fine. They lock down, clamp down nicely, uh, and, you know, it is quite secure. As I said, the Incognito model has been around for almost a decade with different versions of it. And as well as this fine, me medium, fine, fine, medium version, uh, it comes with a straight up fine nib, as well as coming in a rollerball or a ballpoint version as well. And depending on the color or the season you're in, um, will depend on sort of what uh, is available. The MSRP price from Zizo for this pen is 139 US dollars, which is around the 180 Australian dollar mark. How does that fit in the market? Well, for a number five size nib, steel nib, I think it is at the slightly higher point in the market, but um, it is a very nice pen with those features. Uh, it writes well, it feels nice in the hand, the build quality is beautiful, the tolerances are unreal. Like, it's beautifully made, there's nothing I can pick faults in in terms of the build quality or the design really. If anything, a slightly slim section, but that's not build quality, that's personal preference. So you are getting a well-made pen for that price. The nib writes well, I'll go into all this a bit later, but 139 US dollars. Uh, for this uh, pen and it is a re relatively small pen maker we have to understand that as well like they do they they're not um, you know like a single person working behind a lathe but they are they're not like a you know a Mont Blanc or any of the the big name Lamy's Faber-Castell anything like that which is a def which in my opinion is a strength because you can get some really individual and you know when you're talking f runs of 500 of a pen that's a relatively small run so it's a little bit more individual than if you're buying from say Lamy. Time for a size comparison now. And I have the absolute standard Lamy Safari and you'll see it is just just smaller than a Lamy Safari and a similar uh, girth on the pen. Let's look at these pens uh, posted now um, to see this size and uh, you notice that it looks a touch uh, smaller now that it's posted um, than you know the Safari because it does post quite deeply and very securely but I'll come to the posting in just a bit. If you look at the pens now uncapped you'll see it's a fairly comparable size to the Lamy Safari. So if you're a Lamy user, if you enjoy a Lamy Safari, this could be a pen uh, that fits your hand. And even the, the section uh, width is similar, although the Lamy, of course, has its traditional triangular grip. Capped, it is 138 millimeters. Uncapped, it's 125 millimeters. Not a huge pen, but definitely, I think for most hands would be a sufficient size to use unposted, which is my preferred uh, way of writing with it. The threads are not sharp there. They are very smooth, little step down, hardly noticeable, and you have a decent length section, so there's lots of space to hold this pen very, very comfortably. Uh, posted, the pen is 156 millimeters, um, so quite a nice sort of standard length there. Uh, and the grip tapers down at its widest point from 12 millimeters. Now the issue with this pen, or not the issue, um, the story with this pen is the weight. 
In the information coming from Zizo, the pen is listed with a weight of 40 grams. My weight comes out at 46 with 30 of it in the body and 10 uh, in the 16 in the cap. Now that is all well and good. This unposted, for me, the balance is good. The balance is not directly leading down, you know, to the nib. It's pretty centered in the pen. So you get an even weight in your hand. When it is posted, however, the weight does shift. You're putting 16 extra grams on the back of the hand, uh, and that's where you do feel like it is being pulled backwards. Um, and so a higher writing angle becomes more comfortable. Whereas if you're writing, you know, with the pen sort of sitting back in the webbing of your hand, you are definitely going to feel that cap. So for me, it's a pen I write with unposted and I have really enjoyed writing with it unposted. So let's look at it writing now. The standard uh, 90 gram Clefontaine paper here for the Zizo. Bit of a hard start that it had been opened. I've not, I've not found that writing with this pen. It caps securely. It's, it seems fairly airtight. Hard starts are not a thing I've really come up against. This is the in Cognito Blue uh, FM. It's got a steel. It's labelled as a medium, like on the face of the nib there, it says an M for medium. Um, and the ink is just the standard uh, black Zizo uh, black cartridge. Okay, so you can hear it writes relatively smoothly. We know these cameras do pick up a lot of nib noise on the paper, but I can guarantee it writes smoothly. It writes consistently. No issues there whatsoever. Reverse writing, it's pretty bad. Not designed for that at all, like barely legible and quite scratchy. It's a relatively stiff nib. You can see it lays down a little bit more ink, but it's not really, the tines aren't really opening up. So it's definitely not a soft nib uh, in that respect at all. In terms of wetness, this is where this pen is interesting. It feels like it's writing fairly dry because there is a bit of feedback there on the nib, but you can see like it's not a dry pen. It's not a gushing pen. It's certainly not a fire hose or anything like that, uh, but it is a fairly, uh, you know, medium uh, flow pen. But what it does do is it puts down a nice consistent line uh, and that black is, you know, pretty sort of standard uh, black ink. And, uh, but I think it writes nicely and it writes with a nice width line as well. I can see why they've labeled it as a fine medium as opposed to a straight up medium in their, uh, in their company information because it does write on the finer side of medium there. If we're gonna talk pros and cons now for this pen, there's one and a half, well, the, the, they're not even cons, okay. One is kind of a con, the balance of the pen. When it's unposted, the balance is great. And so I put the balance of the pen unposted in the pros column, but when it's posted with the cap on the back, the balance is just a little bit off. There, if you prefer a pen to have a back, bit of back weight to it, this may be a really good pen uh, for you. The other thing is just purely from my perspective, it's a number five nib. And I think on a pen of this size, we're talking a pretty standard size pen, you know, looking at alongside Alami Safari, um, 100, roughly, you know, in that 130, 840 millimeter mark, um, the pen could definitely have a number six nib. The only issue of course being with that is perhaps there's not enough room sort of width in the cap. Um, but in terms of the proportions of the pen, I definitely think it could have a number six or, you know, if they were gonna do a, a large version of this pen at any point, I think that would be really, really great. The pros, I will put the balance back in this column again. The pros of the unposted pen, the feeling in the hand is really very, very nice. Um, I think it's got, the writing of the nib is very nice. We saw it writes consistently. It has a pretty sort of good, reliable ink flow, which is great. 
Another big pro for me is that this pen is Standard International. Now, I know we always talk about this, but I think Standard International makes things just a lot easier. It comes with a converter. Like, that... That is a that is a consideration. It comes with a converter, which is great. Um, my final pro for this pen, and something that caught me the moment I picked up the, or opened up the the package, uh, was that this finish is just absolutely beautiful. I'm not sure how well the camera is really going to pick up this finish, but the way the light hits it, you get those ripples in the in the lacquer. That it's sort of it's almost like uh, it's r like illuminated like the light is coming from within it because it's reflecting off all these little surfaces it's under that lovely polished lacquer on the outside so we're getting a beautiful uh you know like glossy finish and in this color it's not too sort of a garish or anything that it's going to stand out too much um but it's got a nice little pop of personality and some of the other colors are absolutely beautiful so for 139 US dollars MSRP, you're getting a pen that has a good weight to it. It feels substantial. It's well built. It writes well straight out of the box. The moment the cartridge, well not the moment the cartridge went in, but as soon as the ink had come down to the nib, it wrote beautifully and it's written consistently, uh, which is more than we can say for a lot of more expensive pens than this. So the Zizo uh, pens incognito blue a very, very nice fountain pen indeed. I hope you found this video interesting and useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notifications button if you want to stay up to date with the videos that I produce. Uh, please feel free to get in touch using any of the platforms listed below. You can find me on Instagram or Twitter at, at the underscore offstage underscore me, or you can contact me on any of my videos here or drop me an email which is listed down below. If you've got products you think I should be looking at, or if there's a way you'd like to support the channel by sponsoring a review or providing an item for review, I would love to hear from you. In the meantime, enjoy your pens, enjoy writing, and I'll talk to you soon.